Okay, so so the observer. Okay, so so self inquiry or the, or the observer is in, inquiring into the nature of what is what am I or who am I. So the way to do that is first of all experience yourself now. So how 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 is one experiencing self? So if one is experiencing self, is there, for example, you could, you could ask yourself, is there any identification with thought? Is there any identification with body? If there is identification with thoughts, then the thing would be like, well, first thing to notice if there is a lot of uh, thought identification, i.e. if there's a lot of thoughts running through the mind, and there seems to be interest in that, is what's, what is observing thoughts? Is the observer of thoughts? What it, you know? What observes thoughts? Is it a th does a thought observe thoughts, or is there what is observing thoughts? And this is this can't be answered by thinking, because something observes all thoughts and even the thinking processes. So what is the witnesser of thoughts? The other thing is if there is identification with the body, if there's an experience of identification of the body. Now. Identification of the body usually happens in two ways. There can be like a strong feeling within the body, like there might be like a, a knot in the stomach, or there could be like tension in the in the heart or the shoulders. If there's a strong feeling within the body, notice that feeling. Like for example, if I had a knot in the stomach, that would be like you experience. You see, it's an object. See, whatever feeling it is, it's actually got a shape. If it's a knot in the stomach, it's like there's a ball in the stomach. Or if it's like tension in the shoulders, it's like there's a cylinder across the back. Well, if there's experiencing of a, a ball or a cylinder, what is observing? What's observing this? Because remember, um, if there is an object, there has to be an observer of the object, which is not the object. And the observer of the object has to be that is observing an object has to be more limitless than the object because for an, a limited object to be witnessed or experienced the witnesser must be more limitless to be able to observe the limits of the limited object which is being perceived so if one observes a pen then the witnesser of the pen is more limitless than the pen so if there's a if there's a, a ball in the stomach or a cylinder in the shoulders the wit be the witnesser what's witnessing these objects. Now, as soon as you're the detached witnesser of the objects, then there will be freedom from being identified and, and occupying a constricted, uh, a constricted uh, limited space. Usually, as you start dissolving, being the witnesser of these objects in the body, then is there still any sort of identification with the body? If there's an identification with body, like body has parameters. Once you've let go of all the things, like if there's a if there's identification with the limits of the body, like the head and the body, it feels like oh I'm in this, I'm here, and this is the limits of my being. Well, what's witnessing that? Is the witnesser of the limits of the body? Is that limited? So be the witnesser of the, of the, if you like, the shape of the body be the detached witnesser of the shape of the body. As you do that, you realize that it will dissolve the experience of being trapped into the limited confines of the parameters of the body. So let that go. So one now, as you become the detached witnesser of thoughts, when one releases identification or interest to thoughts of the body, then these things start to dissolve. They almost start to disappear. If you're going to the witnesser of thoughts and there's still some identification with thoughts, then go to the observer of the interested observer of thoughts. So if you go to the observer of thoughts and still that observer is hooking into thoughts, that observer has interest in thoughts. So be the observer of the interested observer. Being the observer of the interested observer, does this observer or this witnesser is this witnesser experiencing any thoughts? So as you become come into that, the non-identified witnesser, then it's almost like the thoughts start to disappear.
from, from awareness. As you go to the witnesser of the limits of the body or the objects or feelings within the body, you go to the witnesser of that and if that witnesser has some kind of enmeshment or some kind of interest with uh, the confines of the body, then just go to the observer of that observer. Does that observer have any identification or experiencing of the body? So as you do this, you'll start to dissolve, um, dissolve uh, the experiencing of limitation. Now also be aware, if there's any, uh, another thing is images. If there's any images that are being identified with or being hooked in, any pictures that are going, what is, what is observing pictures? Is the, is the observer of pictures and images, is that an image? What is the observer of all images? So recognize, as you, as you take it back, is there still, in this space, after you've been the witnesser of thoughts, the witnesser of the body, the witnesser of the limitations of the body, as you go to the witnesser of all of these, or the observer of all of these, is there any experience of contraction or limitation? How is that experience of contraction or limitation uh, being experienced? So the other thing to realize is location. Is there any experience being in the witnesser of location? Does it seem like something seems to be identified with a particular locality, like a particular place in the room, or a particular space, or a particular area? But what witnesses that area? What is witnessing any sense of location? Be the witnesser of that. And if that witnesser has still got some interest in that location, be the witnesser of that witnesser. As you be the witnesser of the witnesser of any form of location, then the experiencing of the witnesser will be locationless. Also realize that people who are very trapped with their ego experience time. It's almost like people who have got an unconscious mechanism that is counting every se second that passes. So if there is a sense of time, be the witnesser of time. What witnesses time? And is there a detached witnesser of time that has no interest in time? So as you go to the witnesser of the time, of time, you'll realize that time will disappear and that time will not exist in the witnesser of time. So as you dissolve all these latent unconscious and conscious identifications with time, with body, with location, with feelings, with thoughts, with images, you'll start to experience a witnessing field which is not limited by any of the aforementioned. Realize that the ultimate witnesser witnesses all things which pass or are transitory. If there is any identification with anything that can pass or is transitory or is subject to time or is an object, the witnesser of those things, the witnesser cannot be that, because the witnesser of those things cannot be subject to anything that is within the world of the transitory or the passing or the object or that which is an object. So you just take, you quickly take a reading now. I mean, is there experiencing of limitation? How is that limitation being experienced? Then what is witnessing that limitation? If the witnesser of that limitation has still some identification with that form of limitation, then what is the witnesser of that witnesser? Recognize that when, when time is not identified with, when there's no interest in time, time does not exist when there is no identification with thoughts, thoughts do not exist. When there is no identification with location, uh, local experience as, a lo as being in locality does not exist. So, for experiencing to happen and for experiencing to be experienced the self as being limited, then there is identification with that limit, which then creates the experience of a limited self. So as you release that, 
through being the witnesser of that and being the non-identified witnesser of that, these things dissolve. And then the true self is experienced. And the, you know, and the inquiry is, can the true nature of myself be limited 